If you'd like to try what we make at Superstition, it's as easy as going to our website, superstitionmeadery.com, clicking on Web Store, and you're shopping. Make sure you follow us on social media because we release new products almost every week, and you might just find your next favorite craft beverage. Cheers. When you talk about storing mead, I think it's first worthwhile comparing it to other beverages that we commonly drink. So I always say, when you open a beer, you, you've got hours, maybe. When you open a wine, you've got days, depending on the wine and how you store it. And when you open a mead, you've got weeks. So something that is, say, a can of mead, right? So we have some belt swing. This is gonna be like a beer, right? You're gonna open it up, the carbonation, after you're you know, pouring your glass and enjoying it, it's gonna fade away. So this is really like beer. You've got hours when it comes to something that's like a lower ABV canned mead. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got something like bourbon barrel aged chocolate strawberry sunrise. I mean, this is 15% alcohol by volume. The more alcohol you have, and the sweeter something is, the longer it's gonna last. Think about opening a Cabernet bottle, leaving it on your counter, and you go back a day or two later, it's gonna change a little. Sometimes it may even be improved in a way. It may open up, but a week later, you're gonna to start to get this sort of stale, cardboardy flavor. That's, what you're, what you're tasting is rapid oxidation. So things with alcohol and things with sweetness can resist rapid oxidation, which means that they will taste better longer after they've been opened. So, so far, we're talking about when you open things. Minutes to hours for a beer, days maybe for wine, and, and, and days to weeks for mead, in my experience, hands down. But you can take something like the White Series, 13.5% ABV, it's barrel aged, it's sweet, it's a decadent after dinner dessert type of drink. I have forgotten about these in my fridge where the cork was out, stuck in the back of my refrigerator, and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna try it just to see what's up. And it's delicious, it's changed, it is oxidized, but there is some cool thing that happens when you have a certain level of sweetness where that sugar resists the oxidative process that happens when any liquid is exposed to oxygen. And if you've ever drank a Salterne or a port, think about a sweet wine. You can take a port which has spent at least a couple of years in barrels in most cases, sometimes decades, and it was in that barrel evaporating, drying out, the liquid's going down, it's going down, it's going down. They finally rack it out of that barrel, they stick it in a bottle, they put a cork on it, not even a compressed cork like a wine bottle, but a T-top cork, something you can just pull out in a lot of cases, which doesn't resist oxidation, unlike our compressed corks that we use and most wine will use, right? And that port's gonna taste amazing six months or a year later, even after you've opened it. So that's how long mead can last after you open it. Now, let's talk about what happens before you open it. If you're talking about a can, people that package products in cans, the canning experts themselves will tell you there is no better package to resist light, UV rays, oxidation, everything. In the past, there were different liners in cans that would break down over time, they would degrade, and it could lend an aluminum flavor, or it could just kind of change the flavor in a way that you didn't want it. If you choose the right can with the right liner for the right product, cans can last indefinitely. So let's talk about bottles. A flip top bottle. You take something like Peacher Creature here, it's got a flip top, you've got a rubber gasket. I have had these bottles for 10 years in my house stored upright where the gasket never cracked and no air went in or out and it protected the product perfectly, stored outside of any UV light. So you're good to go. And if you were to put this on its side because you thought, I'm gonna see what happens in 20 years. I mean, really the risk is that red rubber gasket would maybe crack and allow a little bit of oxygen in. So you can also let it hang out on its side if you're really concerned about it. But I can speak from experience and say 10 years or more, that's gonna be good to go. Now, let's talk about bottles with corks. Whether you're talking about a 750, 375, a 500, doesn't matter if you have a good cork. So you can spend pennies 
in volume or a penny or five cents at our economy of scale and buy a cork. We spend 40 cents for each cork. That's kind of crazy. It's one of the highest quality hand punched Portuguese corks you can buy. So cork grows on a tree on bark. And when they harvest the cork bark, it's a sustainable product. They'll make a slice and they will cut around a tree, the circumference. And if you ever have driven through the back roads of Portugal, which I had the pleasure to do once, you see these trucks, like flatbed trucks with just picketed sides, load it with bark. And if you didn't know what it was, you wouldn't have a clue. But you're like, oh, wait a second, that is going to the cork factory. And then they'll take what looks like a cookie cutter and stick it down and remove it and then pop it out and you have a cork. And the cork before it goes in a bottle is actually wider than the whole of the bottle. And a corking machine or a corker will first compress the cork and then there will be a piston that drives it straight down into the bottle. So it wants to expand. That's why it's hard to pull a cork out of a bottle because it started off wider than when it went into the hole that it's living in. And so if you store a cork on its side, you're gonna have liquid that's touching the cork. You've got this just tiny little air bubble, right? Floating around that sure, there's some level of oxidation there, but that's just part of bottling. And you've got this cork and it's saturated. And when you, when you remove a wine cork, like you've, if you've ever been to a nice restaurant and the waiter's like, here, would you like to smell the cork? What they're doing is presenting you with something that you can visually inspect and think, okay, is the cork, is it cracked? Are there, is there a big hole? Was this a bad cork? Because you could, I mean, even, even we buy corks thousands and thousands at a time. You may have one where there's just an imperfection that you didn't know happened to go into a bottle. So if you're at that fancy restaurant, you get that cork first, just kind of look at it. But you're gonna see that in the bottom of the cork, there's a certain level of, of the wine that is sort of absorbed into it. And that's a good sign. That means that it was probably stored correctly on its side. And if it's stored out of light and it's stored at the right temperature and the cork is hydrated, it's gonna prevent air from going in and out in a fast way. It will still happen in a very small micro oxidative way, which actually is one of the reasons why wine in the poetic sense, and it's real, can be different minute to minute, day to day, year to year. So when you're talking about how long does mead last, if you take something that's below eight to 10%, I wouldn't plan on holding that for five or 10 years. That's, th th those products are designed to drink and enjoy fresh, it might still be good. It probably will be, but that's not the purpose of that product. When you take something that's 12, 13, 14, 15% alcohol, you put in one of the best corks you can in one of the nicest glasses that you can, you store it on its side, this will change, it will integrate, it will develop in a way that otherwise wouldn't if you opened it today. This is meant to drink today, but it's also meant to age. So if you're talking about higher ABV sweeter meads, you can, I don't wanna tell you anything that I haven't done myself, but when I opened this place, I opened a bottle of mead that was a homebrew mead that won my first medal at the Mazer Cup, and it was 11 years old at the time, 10, 11 years old. It was in a flip top bottle, just like this, and it was the best meat I've ever had in my life. It was made with Arizona grapes, petite Syrah with Arizona honey. And it was, it's to this day, the best meat I've ever had. And there were no signs of rapid oxidation or staleness in any way. It was perfect, beautiful, bright fruit flavors from the grapes. The honey was, I actually, I think I need to start using more honey in some of my piments because it was so prevalent. I, I knew now why or I knew then why a, a mead judge even a decade before would have thought this is a great example of a piment. So I can tell you unequivocally, mead will last you if stored properly in the right bottle with the right sweetness, with the right alcohol content for a decade or more. And I hope to ask, answer this question in 20 years and to be able to tell you it can last two decades because I've got a couple things in my, in my cellar at home that I've been saving for a special occasion. <laughs>